Hey everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to be creating a gallery with three core technologies, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Before we jump right into building the project, I'm going to describe it. So as you can see, we have here a gallery in the center of the page with different gallery items. If I hover over them, then we will get here the images. I mean, each gallery item has its proper image and they are switching with nice and cool effects on hover. Okay, so as I said, the project will be created based on HTML, CSS and JavaScript. I got the inspiration of this kind of gallery from awards.com. It is a website that showcases and recognizes the best in web design and development. It is a platform where designers, developers and agencies can submit their work to be judged by a panel of experts and winners receive recognition and awards for their creativity, innovation and technical skills. This website also serves as a source of inspiration for those working in the field of web design, providing a curated collection of cutting-edge websites across various categories. So you can go ahead and check out this website and you can find here different cool and awesome designs. All right, let's go back to our project. So before we start to write the code, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, smash the like button and click the notification bell so you never miss out our upcoming tutorials in the future. Okay, let's get started. I have created a new folder on the desktop called gallery in which I store another folder with four different images. Let's go ahead and open this folder in VS Code. And the first thing that I'm going to do is to create our working files. We need three different files. The first one is going to be index.html. Then we will have style.css. And also we need to create file for JavaScript. Let's call it app.js. Then I'm going to open index.html file and create the basic HTML document. I'm going to place here an exclamation mark and then hit tab or enter. So as you can see, we have here the basic HTML document. I'm in the basic HTML tags. So first of all, I'm going to change the title. It's going to be gallery. Actually, let's call it awards gallery. Then I'm going to link the CSS and JavaScript files. Let's open link tag and specify here the path of the file. In our case, we just need the name of the file style.css. And then I'm going to link the JavaScript file. Let's open script tag. Then in the source attribute, I'm going to specify the name of the file. It's going to be app.js. And besides that, we need to insert here an attribute called differ. So this attribute in HTML is used to specify that the script should be executed after the document has been parsed. When you include a script with the differ attribute, it tells the browser to continue parsing the HTML document while the script is being downloaded in the background. The script will then be executed only after the HTML parsing is complete. All right. After that, I'm going to open the project in the browser. For that, I'm going to use one of the VS Code packages called Live Server. You can click here, open with Live Server, or you can click the button down below, go live. So the project is live in the browser. I'm going to place the browser and the editor side by side so that we can work more conveniently. All right, so now I'm going to start to create the HTML markup. Let's insert here development with the class name container. It's going to be the element which will include the entire content of the project. Next, I'm going to insert UL elements with the class name navigation. So inside the UL, I'm going to open list item with the class name nav item. Then we need to include here link element with the class nav link. So the first nav link is going to be C to Montreal. And then I'm going to insert here a span element. And it's going to be 
design and development. So overall we will have four different list items. Therefore I'm going to duplicate this code three times and then change the content. So the second one is going to be Office Studio. Then we will have locomotive. And finally, I'm going to insert here Silencio. After list items, I'm going to insert the gallery, which will include images. And then I'm going to insert here four different image elements. Let's specify the source. We need folder called images and then I'm going to select image one. Let's insert in the alt attributes image one. Let's duplicate this code three times and change the numbers of the images. We need image two, then image three and image four. Okay, so that's it about the HTML markup for now. Now I'm going to start to write some CSS. Let's open style.css file and move it on the right side. First of all, I'm going to create some default styles. Let's go ahead and select every element using an asterisk. First of all, I'm going to define margin and padding. Let's set both of them to zero. And then I'm going to set box sizing to border box. It means that the Width and height of the element will include the padding and the border. After that, I'm going to get rid of default decoration from the link elements. Let's set it to none. Then I'm going to get rid of default bullets from the list items using list style none. And finally, I'm going to define the font family. Let's use here font called Gilles Sans. If you don't have this font, you can go ahead and download it for free and install. Okay, so that's it about the default styles. So all of them are applied to the elements. Next, I'm going to take care of the font size of the HTML element. Throughout this tutorial, I'm going to use RAM as the measurement unit. Right now, one RAM is equal to 16 pixels because by default, the font size of the HTML element is equal to 16 pixels. I want to convert one RAM into 10 pixels and therefore we have to decrease the font size of the HTML element and it's going to be 62.5%. So now the size of the element should be smaller. We have a mistake. We need here font size and not font style. Now the size of the element should be smaller. All right, so that's it about the default styles. Next I'm going to select gallery and hide it for a while. Let's use display none. So as you can see, the images are hidden. After that, I'm going to take care of the container, which is the wrapper of our content. So first of all, let's define height. It's going to be 100 viewport height. It means that the container will take up 100% of the height of the viewport. And then I'm going to place the content in the center. For that, we can use a couple of different ways. In this case, I'm going to use CSS grid we need display grid and then in order to place the content in the center I'm going to use place items with the value center so as you can see the content is placed in the center and then I'm going to define the background color for the container let's set it to FAF4ED alright so the background color of the container is changed Next, I'm going to take care of the navigation, I mean the UL elements. So let's go ahead and select navigation. Let's define width, it's going to be 70 RAM. Then I'm going to change the background color, let's make it white. Also, I'm going to make the navigation rounded using border radius with the value 1 RAM. And finally, create some space inside the navigation using padding. I'm going to set it to 10 RAM on all four sides. Okay, so here we have the navigation. Let's go ahead and select nav item. I mean the li element. So let's go ahead and select nav item. 
I'm going to align the content of the navigation item using Flexbox. So we need to use display flex. Then we need to create some space between the flex items using justify content space between. Actually, we need here space between. And then we need to align the content in the center vertically using align items center. So as you can see, we have here the space between the flex items. After that, I'm going to create some space inside the nav item using padding. Let's set padding to 3 RAM at the top and bottom sides. And then we need here 4 RAM on the left and right sides. Besides that, I'm going to create border at the bottom using border bottom. The values will be 0.1 RAM, solid, and the color is going to be black. And finally, let's set cursor to pointer. All right, so the nav items are customized. We need the border at the top of the first navigation item. So I'm going to select nav item followed by the first child selector. Let's set border top to the same values here. Let's grab these values from here and add it for the border top. Okay. So that's it about navigation items. Next, I'm going to take care of the nav links. I mean the link elements inside the nav items. So let's go ahead and select nav link. Let's set font size to 4 RAM. As for the color, I'm going to use color 222. After that, I'm going to create the hover effects. So I'm going to select nav item with hover. And then on hover, I'm going to increase the padding. Let's set padding to 3 RAM. And also I'm going to decrease the opacity. Let's set it to 0.5. And also let's use transition for smoother effect. We need here padding with the duration 0.3 seconds and then we need opacity with the same duration. Alright, so once we hover over the items then we'll get this nice hover effect. Okay, so after that I'm going to take care of the span elements, I mean those textual elements on the right side of the nav items. Let's go ahead and select nav item followed by this pan. I'm going to set font size to 1.3 RAM. Let's check the browser. So this pan element is customized. Actually, I think that the navigation is smaller than the finished one. Let's check the width. I'm going to increase it. Let's set it to 90 RAM. So now it has the same size as the finished version. All right, so after that, I'm going to take care of the gallery, which right now is hidden. I'm going to get rid of this property from here. Let's define the position of the gallery. It's going to be fixed. And then I'm going to define the tip position. Let's set it to 10 RAM. Also, I'm going to define the width and height. The width is going to be 25 RAM. As for the height, I'm going to set it to 20 RAM and also let's change the background color. It's going to be 1, 1, 1. So right now the images are too bigger. So let's go ahead and take care of that. I'm going to select images followed by the image element. Let's set width to 100%. As for the height, I'm going to make it 25%. So now the images are smaller. Next, I'm going to take care of the wrapper images. Let's set height to 400%. And also, I'm going to change the background color. Let's use here RGBA 255, then 0. Z Actually, we need here 0. Again, 0. And the opacity is going to be 0.3. 
All right. After that, I'm going to take care of the images. We need to fit the image. So I'm going to insert your object. Actually, we need object fit cover. Then I'm going to use padding. Let's set it to 3 RAM. After that, I'm going to hide the outer parts of the gallery. For that, we need to use overflow hidden. So now the outer part of the gallery is hidden and we have here just the one image. And also I'm going to disable the pointer events. Let's set it to none. All right, so that's it about the CSS for now. I'm going to start to write some JavaScript. Let's open up the JS file. First of all, I'm going to select a couple of different variables. I mean the elements. Let's create variable and call it nav items. I'm going to select all li elements using query selector all method. We need here query selector all and we have to specify here the class name nav item. Let's go ahead and duplicate this code twice. So the second variable is going to be gallery. In this case, we need query selector method and I'm going to specify here the class name, which is going to be gallery. As for the third variable, it's going to be images. Let's get rid of all. We need query selector method and then I'm going to specify here the class name, which is going to be images. Alright, after that I'm going to iterate over nav items and then I'm going to add an event listener to each navigation item with mouse move event. So I'm going to add to the nav items for each method which will allow us to iterate over each item in the navigation items. I'm going to insert here a callback function with two parameters. The first one is going to be nav item and then we need an index number. So as I said, I'm going to attach an event listener to the nav item with mouse move event. And also we need here a callback function with an event object. This callback function will be executed once the mouse will move on the navigation item. So once we move the mouse on the nav item, then we have to move the image so for that I'm going to add here images.style then we need transform property it will be equal to template literals and then we need translate y function I'm going to insert here the value which is going to be minus and we need here to pass i multiplied by 25 and finally, we need the percentage sign. So this line of code updates the transform CSS property of the images element. It translates the images vertically by a certain percentage based on the index of the current navigation item. So the i multiplied by 25% calculates the translate y value, where i is multiplied by 25 to determine the percentage of translation. I mean the movement of the element. This will move the images vertically and the amount of movement depends on which navigation item the mouse is over. So now I'm going to add transition to the images in order to make the effect smoother. Let's add here transform. The duration is going to be 0.3 seconds. Also I'm going to add here a little delay time 0.1 second and then we need cubic busier function which will make the movement much nicer. So the values is going to be 0.215 and then 0.61 and then the next one is going to be 0.355 and then finally 1. Okay, let's check the browser. So as you can see, once the mouse moves on the navigation items, then the images are changing. Actually, the images element is moving vertically. Okay, after that I'm going to define the proper background color for each navigation item. I mean, as you can see, each item has different background color. 
For that, I'm going to go to the index.html file. I'm going to add to each navigation item an attribute called data color, which should be equal to various colors. The first one is going to be F5 E E E6. Then the second color is going to be actually we don't need here the pound sign. Let's get rid of it. So the second color is going to be F F6337. Then we will have A E C C C6. And finally, I'm going to insert here C8. 6b85. All right, after that, let's go back to the JavaScript file. I'm going to create new variable and it's going to be color, which should be equal to nav item. Then I'm going to use a method called get attribute. And I'm going to specify here the name of the attribute, which we used a minute ago data color. I mean this attribute here, which we added to the list item. After that, I'm going to define the style of the gallery. I mean, I'm going to add a background color to the gallery. So we need here gallery.style.backgroundColor. And it should be equal to template literal. Then we need pound sign. And I'm going to specify here the variable which is going to be color. And then let's add transition to the gallery. We need here background color with a duration 0.2 second. Okay, so now each item has its own background color. After that, I'm going to take care of the position of the gallery so let's go back to the VS Code. Actually, I'm going to get rid of those temporary background colors from here. Then let's go back to the JavaScript file. So I'm going to define here two different variables. The first one is going to be top and it should be equal to e.client y. Then we need same for the left position. Let's use left and in the case of the left position I'm going to use client x property. Okay, so the first line retrace the vertical coordinate of the mouse pointer relative to the client area of the window when the mouse move event occurs. Client y is a property of the event object that provides the vertical coordinate of the mouse pointer. As for the second line of code, it retrieves the horizontal coordinate of the mouse pointer relative to the client area of the window when the mouse move event occurs. This property, I am in client x property, provides the horizontal coordinate of the mouse pointer. Now we need to define the top and left properties of the gallery. So we need here gallery followed by the style property and then we need top property. It's going to be equal to template literals. Then we need here top property, which we defined above. And then I'm going to add here pixels. The same thing we need for the left position. So let's change top into left. And the same we need here. All right, let's go ahead. So as you can see, once we hover over the nav items, then the proper images will display with the different position. So I'm going to place the images in the center. For that, I'm going to add to the gallery, transform, translate with the values minus 50% and again minus 50%. So now as you can see, the images are placed in the center. Okay, I'm going to add little transition to those positions. Let's add here left with the duration 0.15 seconds. And then we need top with the same duration. All right, 
So everything looks pretty nice. Next, I'm going to hide the gallery by default. So I'm going to add here scale function with value zero. Then let's go back to the JavaScript file and I'm going to attach an event listener to the nav item with the mouse over event. So we need here nav item followed by the add event listener method and I'm going to specify here the event mouse over. Let's add here a callback function. So I'm going to define the style property of the gallery. We need to place the gallery in the center and also we need to display it using scale function. So I'm going to add here gallery dot style dot transform and then I'm going to grab this value from here. Instead of zero, we need here one. Let's go to the browser. So by default, the gallery is hidden and once we hover over the navigation items, then it will display. We need to hide the gallery once the mouse leaves the navigation. So I'm going to duplicate this code. Let's change the event. It's going to be mouse leave instead of mouse over. And we need here zero instead of one. Also, I'm going to add transition for the gallery. I mean, let's add here transform with the duration 0.3 seconds. Okay, so now everything looks and works pretty nice. Galleries hiding with transition. All right, after that, I'm going to take care of the button view. I mean, this button. Right now, it is not created yet. So let's go to the index.html file and insert here button. It's going to be gallery btn. And I'm going to insert here view. Then let's go to the CSS file and select gallery btn. I'm going to set position to fixed. Then let's change the background color. It's going to be 2e7, ee7. Then I'm going to set width to 5 RAM. After that, I'm going to define the aspect ratio. It's going to be 1. So in this case, the height and width will be equal. Next, I'm going to get rid of border. Let's set it to none. And also make the button rounded using border radius. Actually, we need here border radius with the value 50%. After that, I'm going to set font size to 1.2 RAM, then change the color. It's going to be white. And also, let's disable pointer events, make it none. All right, after that, I'm going to define the position of the button, like we did it in case of the gallery. So I'm going to select, actually, let's go to the JavaScript file. Let's go ahead and select gallery btn. I'm going to specify here the class name, gallery btn then i'm going to define the top and left properties in the same way like we did it in case of the gallery so i'm going to duplicate this code change here the name of the variable it's going to be gallery btn and then we need to duplicate those two lines of codes change here the variable we need gallery btn and finally let's Add by default to the gallery, transform, translate with the values minus 50%, then minus 50%, and we need here scale function with the value 0. And also, I'm going to add here transition for smoother effect. Let's set transform with the duration 0.3 seconds. 
then we need left point one second and top point one second okay so as you can see we have here the button in the center of the image and actually with the project we are done the gallery looks and works pretty nice hopefully you liked and enjoyed this project if so then please smash the like button subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell so you never miss out our future tutorials all right see you in the next video